have always told me how to do things. People always told me I do things wrong. What they don't realize, I really don't care. I do things the way I want. I do things my way. Hey, IFBB Pro, Johnny Jackson here. Welcome in. We are back here in my thin uh, this time, and uh, I just wanted you to bring you in a little bit closer uh, of finding out like who I am or some of the things I've done in my life. And uh, one of the major things, I mean, I spent all my young adulthood uh, in the military, basically. So I want to talk about that a little bit. What got me to go into the military, I really wanted to go, and there was no one in you know, my town that didn't think I was going to pursue football and uh, maybe even go off to maybe even get, get, get in the NFL. But, uh, but who knows? Uh, you know, stranger things have happened. Uh, anyway, I had to talk with my parents and my dad uh, thought it was a better idea for me to go into the military. And even if I didn't want to go full time, go in part time. And so monthly I'll have, earn a paycheck. So while I'm um, in college, I won't have to mess with him <laughs> for money. I can earn my own money, you know, and not always, you know, leech off of him and my mom. Uh, so with that, you know, pretty much what my dad said was golden to us. So uh, I had to think twice. Uh, I went ahead and searched out a recruiter and found out the deal. Luckily, we had a National Guard unit. It was only about five or six miles away from my mom's house, uh, the 144th Supply Company in uh, Hamilton, New Jersey. So anyway, I, I uh, went in first as a 44 Bravo, which is a welder. And so my uh, training lasted unusually longer than uh, it normally would because of uh, what you had to do for that MOS, which was I had to go to pre-basic training before I went to basic training. And then after basic training, I went right into AIT. One of the worst things about basic training is I did my basic training down in Fort Dix, New Jersey. And as you know, I'm from New Jersey. And so I was literally 45 minutes from home and could not go. You know, how horrible is that? Plus, with all the drill sergeants in your face and all the training. And um, I mean, I remember sleeping at night and we were trying to sleep at night because uh, you never know when the drill sergeant was going to come through and just wake everybody up. And, you know, it was winter time. And so uh, I remember being, being seven degrees, seven below zero outside in snow. And we're in our, we had to sleep in our PT uniform, which was gray shorts and a gray top. And you might've seen them with army on it. Um, so anyway, we'll wake up, you know, with the drill sergeant yelling at us and get outside right now, whatever, in formation. So, you know, we'll run, we're on the third floor and uh, we're running downstairs and getting for maybe we only had a certain amount of time to get down in formation. And if everybody didn't make it on time, then everybody had to run back up and get in bed and then do it all over again is when you got up, you had to make up your bed also. So you couldn't get up and just sprint out. You had to get up, make sure everything's nice and tight. And you had to make sure you had you can bounce the quarter off the bed. Because if any bed was untidy, everybody back upstairs, and we're going to do it all over again. And uh, so I remember doing that, you know, man, it was just night after night after night, pretty much. So I have to tell you, you know, while you're going through it, you're thinking, why are they doing this to, to me? What the hell's going on? I just want to go home. But uh, unbeknowing to me, as soon as I got out, you know, out of my training, um, it was about three months after my training, my National Guard unit got activated. So that means I got activated into regular army and I got sent to uh, uh, Saudi Arabia for uh, Desert Storm, Desert Shield in 91. And I, uh, we actually left country January 7th. And mind you, my birthday is January 30th. So I was 20 years old uh, when we left the country and I was 21 by the time uh, I got back. So uh, you can just think back uh, where you was when you turned 21 or about to turn 21. You know what I mean? Most you know guys are like going out or ready to go out and you know have a good time going to bars. You know, you're legal now, you can drink and stuff like that and hoop and hoop and holler and have a good time. Well, I was sitting on a cot uh, in 100, about 130, 140 degrees, you know, in full battle rattle and, uh, you know, sitting there going, I'm 21 today. Lucky me. Yep. <laughs> so uh, just imagine that on your 21st birthday. But it's, it's funny because, uh, 
you know, I basically still was in shape. I lift, of course, and, and the stuff like that. And lifted over in Saudi because uh, Arnold was gener generous enough to uh, uh, donate uh, a bunch of weights uh, for us uh, to be able to work out. So they built GP large uh, tents and uh, put weights in and set it up like gyms. So we were able to, you know, work out, you know, and when we weren't able to leave the compound to go work out, you know, we used what we had there, sandbags, tent poles, whatever, uh, tires, what, whatever was available, that's what we did uh, to stay in shape. Anyway, um, you know, I brought a few things to share with everybody also. Um, you know, my very first dog tags uh, that I received uh, going into the military, I kept them, uh, of course, means a lot to me. I got my gas mask um, that I had uh, when I was over there in Saudi also. So uh, I got to sneak this and keep it, so that's cool. Basically, they give you 11 seconds to dawn and clear the mask, you know, to say that you, you know, in the, in the chemical environment, um, so you don't get, you don't inhale so much to affect your health. I haven't had this thing on forever, so. But it's for mutination, so what the hell. We'll try it on. See how it goes. It's not gonna be 11 seconds, but, you know, it's still a pretty cool prop to have, you know, around for uh, memory's sake. You know, so imagine walking around in this and doing your training and uh, building sandbags and everything else, you know, with this stuff on. With that alone, it's stifling. So you can imagine having this on and then uh, a mop suit, which we had to have on quite a bit over there because we had no idea whether, you know, chemical weapons were being used or not. And uh, we got gut attacked quite a bit. Um, we actually stayed uh, near the airport where uh, President Bush came on, came on TV and uh, announced that uh, the war was on and uh, the first fighter jets were flying out of, I uh, can't remember exactly what the airport was uh, called, but uh, yeah, we heard, as soon as uh, he said that, all of a sudden they start jets start taking off. So, yeah, you can imagine <laughs> the fright uh, really set in. Reality, reality really set in. And then it was probably a couple days after that happened to where we started getting scud attacked. And, uh, man, it was the scariest thing ever. And uh, all the company, it's funny because uh, <laughs> we got used to it. But uh, I remember the first time uh, we got the scud alarm came on. We were in uh, Cobar Towers, by the way. Um, it was uh, seven story buildings that uh, brick buildings that we stayed in. And so there was about seven of us, seven of us to eat to uh, each room that we stayed in on our cots. So it wasn't like apartment buildings or anything like that. We still had cots that we stayed on. We still ate MREs. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to talk about the scud missiles first. Uh, so anyway, the first night we got scud attacked and we heard the scud alarms and uh, all the company rushed down into the, you know, into uh, the foyer. And then uh, we all gather up and we're like, yeah, it's getting real now, it's ready to go. And everybody getting charged up and stuff like that. So then we all come out of the building and kind of get in some kind of formation, all this stuff. And, you know, we didn't realize until the next day when we talked to other companies that was there already, they were like, we were all watching you. We were all standing there at the windows watching you guys. So we did the same thing when we first got here. Uh, but the safest thing or the thing to do is just stay in the building. There's no need to be out in the compound in the open because, you know what I mean, there's such a big kill radius for the Scud missile. I mean, it's not going to do any good. Anyway, so we realized that and we stayed in our buildings. And we got so used to getting Scud attacked. We had uh, been there for a while. We got Scud, got scud alarm. Then we all hovered up uh, near the window, near the picture window. So we make a countdown because after the alarm, you have about, I think it was like 15 seconds, 15, 20 seconds. Then you actually see, you can't see the Scud missile. It's night, but you can see the flame from the Scud missile. So we stand there and all of a sudden it's 10, 9, 8, 7. We're all counting down to 1. Then all of a sudden you see the flame from the Scud missile coming across. And then you hear 
over at the airport, you know, the hatch is opening up for the Patriot missile. So you hear real loud. And then you see so the Patriot missile straight up in the air. You just see the fire from it. And then it'll just take off after the Scud missile. And then you see the big explosion and then the delay and then boom, boom. A Patriot missile hit a Scud missile over our compound. And the next day, you know, everybody went out and kind of searched around to see what kind of damage was going on. We seen like uh, a pieces of whatever, who knows what it was, but it was like little canisters and there was like white powder and stuff like that. And I had my mop suit on minus my gas mask, holding my M16 and I was kneeling down over top of it, taking a picture, you know? And I'm like, now I look at him like, you idiot. You have no idea what that was, you know? So uh, yeah, being young, being ignorant is bliss, I guess. You know, and knowing that. And then uh, over here, I have my frag vest that helped to protect me uh, from fragments. Being a, a, when I was over in Saudi, I was a 12 Bravo. I changed my MOS to 12 Bravo, which is combat engineer. So we breached minefield. We made the way for everybody to get through the minefield to get to the battlefield. Yeah, we had some pretty hardcore guys uh, with me over there. And uh, we had some really big missions uh to accomplish so uh we'll have i'll show this is one little uh, this one medal is really special to me um this is from the u.s army central command in kuwait and the command sergeant major uh visited our company and uh because we're just doing such a good job over there and presented us with uh these medals so that was pretty uh really cool then i had the national defense medal and uh the Kuwaiti medal here, another Kuwaiti medal, um, Army Achievement medal here, uh, this from my National Guard unit, the National Guard uh, medal there. So just a, brought out a few just to share, a uh, few medals there. Then also uh, some picks, uh, just a few. Here's a pick of myself and my buddy, Robert Silva. And uh, we were so close, uh, they used to call me Silva, him Jackson. I mean, li me and this guy was like inseparable, seriously. Um, God, I miss this guy. It's incredible. Whew, man, memories. We want to have one here where me, Silva, and Sergeant Will Williamson. And uh, you can see we we're on our way to Kuwait City. Um, here's actually uh, a picture of uh, what they call the Road of Death where it was leading out of Kuwait City, where troops were trying to get in and civilians was trying to get out and uh, the Iraqi army just was pounding them. And so we had to go in with bulldozers and just push things off to the side so we can get through. Tank got uh, blown up and it has uh, this side up and the arrow. And then you can see a tank ground right next to it. And it's just some pictures of some of the oil fires that they had started over there. and. Uh, this is one of the missions that I really didn't care for so much. Some of the bodies, civilian and military alike, that uh, couldn't be identified, you know, just pretty much mass grave. And that's the, the byproduct of war. And here's some of the, the equipment that got blown up by uh, tank mines. Here's actually Kuwait City. Uh, we're actually driving into Kuwait City, so I took a picture the best I could of actually going into Kuwait City, what it looked like. Um, anyway, they had plenty of money, but they didn't have any food. So we brought rations to give out to uh, the hungry, did what we could. But this is the coolest. Uh, this is actually a bill with Saddam Hussein uh, on it. Um, so they were throwing this away. They didn't want anything with him on it, of course. And uh, I, you know, of course, I couldn't help, help it. Uh, I got lucky enough to uh, get a bill and... Uh, still got it today yeah but yeah so um like i said i just want to bring you guys in give you a little piece of uh my life and what i've been through and some of the things i've done and accomplished and uh so i hope you enjoy and uh i didn't bore you too much and uh i'll see you next time